just a reminder that you should be making your final preparations for test two. Test two covers test two will cover just chapter four. Um, but if you've been looking at chapter four, you realize that there's a lot of information in that chapter. So um, make sure that you go through it very carefully and prepare well for the test. Um, as you prepare for the test, hopefully you've been looking at the videos and paying attention to some of the keywords and techniques that I've talked about um, you know, in solving and understanding the problems. Remember that the test is really about the concepts and not the problems. So I want to know that you understand the addition rule and you know when to use it. I want to know that you understand the difference between permutations and combinations and you know when to use each of those formulas. So in an effort to help you really think about the formulas and, and how you should approach the problems using the formulas, I'm offering an extra credit project. Uh, project. It's worth 20 test points um, and basically you'll build a flow chart of the formulas that are um, available for use. You can do this using a technology tool or you can do it on a piece of paper as long as you get it to me before Friday at 1.30. That's when it's due and ideally of course you're going to do this before the test. When I approach problems and probability I approach them just this way, you know, looking for those keywords and asking those key questions that you've heard me talking about. So I just want to show you um, maybe one or two technology tools that might help you accomplish this. And um, here's one that's called Mindomo and it's free, um, pretty easy. Here's an example of a flowchart that they already had um, there for me. Uh, so you can kind of get the idea of how this might work. You know, you've got a main idea and then you've got branches from that idea and so forth and so on. So how would we use this? I'm going to close this and try to start our own. To map out our ideas regarding um, probability and counting. Okay, so uh, first of all, we're going to deal with probability, and I'm just going to make a branch if I can over here. And we talked about some um, different things regarding probability, like um, our classic probability, classic and relative frequency probability. And while I've got this highlighted, I'm going to click this note icon and just say the probability of E equals the number of ways in which E occurs divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay, so in probability, we can almost always drop back to this idea and especially once we learn how to count different things like we do at the end of chapter 4 we can count the number of ways in which event E might occur and we can almost always easily count the total number of outcomes so that's one idea uh, from there I'm going to highlight my probability tab again and um, talk about the addition rule. Okay, and when it comes to addition, we have two, well, we have a question, um, and that is, I'm just clicking and dragging to add a branch, are the events mutually exclusive or are they not mutually exclusive? Okay, if they are mutually exclusive, then I can remind myself that the probability of A or B 
equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay. And I'm going to go back over here by the addition rule and just, um, if I can edit this. And so I just did a double click to edit. And I'm going to put or, because that's my keyword for the addition rule. If it's not mutually exclusive, then we have to say the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both. Alright. And so I would continue to build my map that way. Um, and it should serve as a good review tool for me thinking about all of the different formulas that we've talked about. Over here I would probably um, add my branch for uh, counting rules. And there are several of those that you should be familiar with. Okay. And it's not too difficult to do this. And then, of course, um, we'll be able to share this map. You can publish it to the web. And basically, I would choose this option. Anyone who has the map or who has the link can access it. Here is the address. Uh, I would just click copy. That stores that address in the computer's memory. And now, um, you know, you'll submit it. I think I'm going to put a place, hmm, I think in the Dropbox. I don't want to put this on the discussion board because I don't want people to just copy what other folks have done. But basically, that's how you're going to um, do that. Okay, or if you don't like the technology part, I don't want you to get lost in that. Uh, what I want you to do is make sure you understand rules. So if you need to do it on a piece of paper, that's fine. If you need to do it using index cards and lay them out in a certain way that makes sense, that's fine. But I want you to have a strategy for how you're going to approach these problems. All right, and just make sure whatever it is you get that to me before... Um, time for the final exam. Just do not email it to me. Um, either put it in the Dropbox or you're going to need to um, come by my office and put it in the mailbox. If you do come by the office and leave something in my mailbox, make sure you put your name and section on it so I can ident easily identify uh, where it may have come from. But most importantly, I want you to make sure that you have a strategy for how to approach the problems. Okay? All right, if you have any questions, please give me a call about it. Thank you.